Right, we're going then again. Yeah. We've had a couple of weeks off, but we're about to get going. Where are we going, Helen? We're going to go to a place called Poppy Poppy Fields, is it? Or Poppy Lands. <laughs> Start again. Well, hi, everyone. A warm welcome back to the channel. And we're off again. Tell them where we're going, Helen. We're going to Poppy Land. It's a place in Thought Market. Again, it's only local, but it's just a little weekend trip because we haven't been anywhere for a couple of weeks, have we? No, we've had a... Well, a busy time. We're going to tell you all about that as part of this video. So uh, we're off to Thought Market, as Alan said, Poppy Land. And um, we want to give you, hopefully, a bit of a view of how we set up. We're looking forward to this site because it's uh, an adult-only mm. site. We've passed it a million times on our way to other places, haven't we? And always wondered what it might be like. It's got good reviews as well. So yeah. we'll have a look at that one. Apparently pretty quirky. And uh, you might notice something else that's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. I'm not in the driver's seat. I'm going to drive us here better than Dave. Which is why I put my sunglasses on, so I uh, uh, try and chill myself out a little bit. I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> He's bad enough just when I drive the car. I'm fine. Um, Helen's a very good driver, and she's done something that I've never done. She's actually been on a proper course to learn how to tow. Mm -hmm. So you're probably more experienced than me, really. We'll see. Time will tell. Anyway, I'll just close the back door we've left open, and we'll get going. What back door? Right, the door's open. Oh, you, that's another mistake of yours then. <laughs> Let's go away and chill in this hot weather. See you soon. Bye bye. Helen's done a cracking job of getting us on the pitch. She's reversed on nice and straight. So what we need to need to do, Hel, is see how level we are. If just come in and I'll show you the spirit level. Pretty much spot on. So really happy with that. If we go the other way, and I know you'd probably put these on the floor. Pretty much there, I'd say. Always good to have a little slope because you need to drain your water away. So a little, a little bit of a slant's fine. Next thing we want to do is we want to get the lock on. So we have to be sure that this is in the right place. As you can see, it's not. So I'm going to put the motor mover on and just get that level. If you've got a motor mover, you'll be familiar with this, but you just need to make sure you turn the key and the motor mover into the on position. So that's now on. 
and then you follow me around here huh? cool never learned to be that stiff before so motor movers on just need to get the remote control so yeah you just press both buttons to fire this up that's ready to go and then if you just look down here we do need to go forward slightly to get that in the center and then literally forward and I just get that little line here pretty much in line with that it's a bit too far so let's go back a bit and then we're about there so the lock should fit on there now nice and easy the number of times that we've pitched up and then I've realized that's not aligned it's been a pain take your little dust cap off the Realco lock is different depending upon the caravan that you have first thing you have to just do is just slot in the little bolt it's got a strange looking uh, key to it and that makes your key unique slot that in it's slotted on perfect so you know you've got the thing in the right position and then I just put it on by hand for a minute or two and so I get it hand tight there and then just tighten it up a, not too tight but just enough to make sure it's there we go that's a lovely fit and then the final bit to the jigsaw is the actual lock itself so that will slot in okay so we're, we're all locked up we haven't got the steadies down yet so we'll do that next So next thing is get the electric on. The thing about this is make sure you plug into the caravan before you plug into the actual electric hookup on the site. So into the caravan first. This is a 10 meter cable. This is a short one because we've literally only got to go to here. Bella's just inspecting the electric hookup, make sure it's okay. One thing I have noticed is these pitches are very straight and level, which is fantastic. We'll get that in. And uh, yeah, we're all, all switched on. So the thing about the electric cable is I always took it up out of the way. This is the short one, but if you're on a reel, you must make sure that you take the electric cable all the way off the reel. I have nothing coiled up. If you do, you're going to have a problem. So I keep it nice and slack and loose. And stick it out of the way so we haven't got a trip hazard going on. Good. Okay, so we're straight, we're level. We've got electric. I'll take this cover off and then we'll go and get some water. So getting fresh water couldn't be easier just to the right hand side of the ladies and gents toilets fresh water and the wastewater is to the left of the toilets and look they've got chickens don't feed the chickens <laughs> pretty cool though isn't it first impressions here are superb lovely warm welcome from the owners so what I tend to do is fill up the aqua roll and while I'm at it I just fill up this watering can as well and then I've got some water for the toilet flush right so having got the water back to the pitch simply a case of getting the aqua roll here in line with your ultra flow water intake your truma connection there now, if this was low down, I would stand it on a couple of blocks to bring it up, but it's not too bad. And normally I keep the pump in the sink, and as you can see, it does sort of coil up a little bit. So I just straighten it out a bit, like this, before I put it into the aqua roll. And plug in. That's good. 
ready for pulling through the other side now. Up next then, the waste master. I've got these collapsed pipes which you might have seen before. I've got about eight or nine or ten of these, I can't remember now, but only ever normally use one or two. So this is just a the bit that connects up to your waste inlet or outlet. Just here. So I'll put these on first and then depending upon how the land lies and what space I've got sometimes I do that the other way around and have the waste master over here but we're okay. Pipe in there. straight in so that's got a little bit of a slope down so the water will flow nice and easy into that so that's good so the final water job is here make sure that the toilet flush is full and that's why I fill up the watering can There we go. I don't really measure the pink out to be honest. You probably should, but I'll just tip a little bit of pink in there. It says you've got enough in this little one for 15 doses. Not cheap, this Thetford pink, but I do think it's the, the best. It does leave a nice smell and it's quite concentrated. Okay, Helen, blue jobs are nearly there. How are we getting on with the pink jobs? Yeah, pink jobs are always easier, but look, they do involve a sandwich for me, which is fantastic, and a cup of tea. No matter how far you've traveled, you need a sandwich and a cup of tea when you get there. So we've got our power unit switched on over here, and you can see the indicator says we're on the electric hookup, and if the car was connected still, then the car would be illuminated. Obviously that's not, so that's good. We need to turn on the Aldi heating system. We don't want any heating, because it's gonna be 40 degrees in a little while but we would, wouldn't mind a little bit of hot water. So that's on two kilowatt and the hot water's already on. Let's go and pull some water through from the bathroom first. So when you pull water through for the first time, it's not unusual for it to spit and splurt. Uh, I'll pull the cold water through first. The pump's just kicked in. So there's a little bit of water in the pipe still from the last trip here. But when that's pulled through, that should start spitting and splurting a little bit. There it goes. So here in the kitchen, same thing. This should come through quicker because we're much closer to the tank. So that'll split for a little while. There you go. And that's through on the cold. Do the hot the same. Because we're literally right next to the water tank here. That's already through. So it's dinner time and uh, Helen's locked up a nice Mediterranean salad here. We've got uh, iron brew there. Don't be Diet fooled. iron brew. Diet iron brew. Yes. But don't be fooled, um, Helen's just polished off a bottle of Campo Viejo. Uh, you had one glass. Which might explain why she brought me out two forks and put a wine glass in the bin. <laughs> yes, there she is, yes, yes, yes. Over here we've got on the teppanyaki. Have I pronounced that correctly? No, you've confused box. me. Teppanyaki, there's the box. It's teppanyaki. 
Yeah. So I just said, a couple of pieces of uh, wild salmon. It did stick, unfortunately. I should have put a little bit of oil yeah, on there. Anyway, the sun's still out. It's uh, getting off at six o'clock in the evening. It's blinking hot. There's the view over the trees. Look at that. Camping. That's camping. Right, I just want to show you in here. It's quite quirky, this place, isn't it? Hand gel outside. So, a number of things going on in here. First of all, we've got a washing machine, which is nice. Little sink there. And uh, over here, this is a freezer, which is absolutely jammed full. <laughs> of magnums, look at that lot, soleros, <laughs> more magnums, crikey, and tubs of ice cream, look at that. And if you want to help yourself that's fine, and you pay the price as they stated, and you put the money in the honesty box, same with the washing machine. And if you want to get yourself a, a little wash capsule, all the money goes in the honesty box. There's an iron over here that you can use. There's some books and some games here. Cluedo will connect four and catchphrase and different things, which is good, isn't it? Yeah, the lending library. So come down here and get yourself a book. Hmm. Travel pursuit, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's on in the local area, so some leaflets and stuff on top. Mm -hmm. Some of the old camping and caravan club magazines, I think I've got more than them than they have. A uh, big map of uh, Norfolk here, which is superb, so if you want to find your location, which is actually here, where the drawing pin is, there it is, there, Thorpe Market. We're actually four miles away from Cromer, which is just over here, there it is. Uh, eight miles away from Sheringham, which is just a little further along, which is good. It's also four miles back to North Walsham, which we showed you on the way in is where the um, Waitrose is. But actually you don't need to go to Waitrose because look, all down here, milk, coffee, tea, shower gel, washing up liquid, washing cloths, foil. I hear you have crisps. Not that we're interested in these Biscuits. of course. <sighs> Might have to come down and get some Custard, hobnobs. marmalade jam, rice pasta, beans, tomato ketchup and mayonnaise, vinegar and pepper. And in here Dave is definitely out of bounds. Oh, look at this. Kit Kats, Twixers, Twirls, Ripples, Yorkie bars. <gighs> oh, I might be coming back down here. Oh Lane! There's a dairy milk hole in that no, bar. No, not for you. So toilet rolls are here, they're actually 40 pence, I think. Yeah. And in here, that's a campus freezer, which you can freeze some ice cubes. Yeah, if you bring your own stuff, just label it. Things like that. Really good, isn't it? Mm. And then, if you want to uh, lend a DVD out, or even Look watch it. That's a jigsaw. So like they're all jigsaws. Yeah, that's good. Jigsaw pictures, yeah. Some more over here. <laughs> it is quirky. This is a proper camping site for me. And in terms of cost, what did you say it was for three nights? I think it was eighty-two fifty for three nights. There's a two pound each bags. Yeah. Hessian bags. There's a, even a Hoover here. Look. Uh, oh, that's for staff use only. Fair enough. Yeah. It's a cool little porter cabin, isn't it? Mm. Microwave in the corner there as well. There's your honesty box there, Rick. Honesty box there. Has everyone been honest? Oh yeah, there's, yeah, mo there's money in it. Been honest. That's good. I like it. We'll go on the dog walk now, shall we? Yeah, we'll go have a walk round. Yeah, all these uh, pictures there, they're all jigsaws, they're lovely, aren't they? And just outside the porter cabin here, we've got the ladies and gents' toilets, and there's a shower in there as well, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. 50p. 50p for a yeah. shower. Yeah. So I think we worked out it was uh, 
was it 27? 27 pounds 27 pounds 50 a night to stay here yeah. 16 amp electric fabulous There's a gnome there that says welcome on it. <laughs> I like it. Bins are down here and the house down here. There's a cottage you can rent called Puddle Duck Cottage. I think it's his first one here. And then beyond that there's the owner's house. Say again, get closer. B and B opposite, very nice. Oh, the greenhouse, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we've drove past this lots of times and we've looked at it, haven't we? We've always looked at it and thought, shall we? And we have done. That is quite a tight town then for the road. It is. That's probably why I missed it. Yeah, Helen did miss the turn, but these things happen. We're over <laughs> it now, aren't we? <laughs> good thing is, the good thing is we never made a big thing of it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get over here. We're going down that lane, straight opposite. <laughs> yeah, four miles from uh, Cromer, four miles to, uh, to North Walsham, eight miles to Sheringham. So. I think we're planning a day in Cromer tomorrow. Yeah, that's the plan, Stan. Oh, there's a lovely smell, Helen. What's the smell? It might oh, be these. In the garden. Yeah, the well, they give a nice scent, don't they? But we got it from Derbyshire. Near Chesterfield. Um, Hatfield? No, Hatfield. Yeah. Can't remember what it's called, isn't it? Harewood, yeah. Hairwood that really, it might be that. Rings a bell. Yeah. It's really growing. Hmm. Here they come. One woman and her dog. I'm not, I'm saying nothing, I don't want my head and my hands to play with. Exactly. Look over here, Helen. Yeah. So the harvest has started, hasn't it? It has. Now we were away, was it last year, the year before? Combine was out, oh the dust, it was amazing. Oh, Where were we? Cambridge. Cambridge yeah, we went, we went to Duxford, yeah. yeah. So this is a designated, uh, well, uh, recommended dog walking area from Poppy Land, literally That's across the road. Lovely. I mean, I could come over here with a drone and uh, maybe just get a little bit of a sense of where we are geographically. Long shadows because it's, uh, well, about half seven. This is a 45, yeah, cool. great mice yeah, think alike. Walk, yeah. yeah, now there's a church over here. Uh, that church is at a place called South Reps. Now there's a pub down there called the Vernon Arms, Helen. Oh, I know it, yeah. Uh, we've been there before. Yeah. And if you carry on from South Reps, not much further down the road, you're at Munsley, which is right on the coast. And you're also quite close then to um, the lighthouse at uh, Haysborough. Hey right, Helen, good, good opportunity to give our subscribers a bit of an update of some of the plans. Do you want to talk about Bella and what she's been doing? Well, yes, Bella, when we went to Cliff House, Bella had um, a bit of a sore eye. Yeah. And we took her to the Kesingland vet, the local vet. And um, they thought it was conjunctivitis, <laughs> and um, they treated her for that for best part of a week. But it wasn't getting better, and it, the eye was turning blue. So I decided to take her home to my own vet because we were at home then. And um, it turned out she has a condition called lens luxation. Yeah. And that's where 
the lens tips through the eye to the front and causes secondary glaucoma or other conditions. Um, seems it was hereditary, so her parents would have had it and she'd have given it to any pops that she had. We think she's had two litters, don't we? Yeah. For those of you that don't know, by the way, uh, we rehomed Bella last November, mm. so about six months ago, and uh, she's five years old. So it's, it's classed as a medical emergency, so we had to rush her down to the Queen Mother Royal Veterinary Hospital at Hatfield in London um, two yeah. weeks ago. Two yeah, two weeks, weeks ago, ago, and we yeah. had literally drove down late on at a Saturday midnight, night. We yes. left at half past midnight. Yeah. So we got there and they gave us three options and um, one was to do this procedure which is called couching which attempts to push the lens back to the back of the eye but the the pieces that have held the lens in place has actually broke down because of the genetics of the dog so basically it was we'll try they tried it didn't work so they decided that, um, well we decided, they gave us an option to take the eye out and so she lost the eye. Um, the other eye has got signs of the same happening but we're actually treating it at the moment and it's actually doing very well and she's doing very well at the moment. The good thing is, yes, yeah, she is pretty much back to normal isn't she in terms of her behaviour? Yeah. And the reason we decided that the eye would come out was because Whatever we did, it was going to cost an awful lot of money, even taking the eye out. Yeah. We did try the couching first, yeah. um, because that potentially would have kept 50% of her eyesight, or thereabouts, had it been successful. But the problem is, she's a very nervous dog. Um, she needs to be able to see where she's going, because if she couldn't see at all, then I think her life would be completely miserable. Yeah, it would. So... We thought the best thing to do for her was just get take the problem away as quick as we possibly can. And get her home. Get her home, yeah. because she was very stressed at the hospital in London. So we thought, get her home, and um, let's hope that the eye that's left stays... As good as long as possible. Good for as long as possible. Now they've told us we might get six months, she might get longer. The good news is, she was at the vet this other day for a little check-up on something else, and that good eye is doing very well mm. you know really in, in tip-top condition at the moment so as you can see from her dog walking her tail's up she's got a little spring in her step she knows exactly where she's going she can see really well with one eye so fingers crossed but it was very stressful wasn't it yeah definitely yeah we had to go to london twice this cost us a lot of money it's not about the money but I think we've spent with the different trips of the vets and the trips down to London. It's what? How much? Three and a half, four thousand. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we said when we took her on, we wanted to do the best for a rehomer and give her a decent life, and that's what we're trying to do. Nothing but the best for Bella. Hey, Bell. Nice walk there. Thoroughly enjoy that. So. This is the main road. Is it the Cromer Road? Certainly so. yeah. so the road to Cromer. We'll just wait for them to go. Good thing is here, if you wanted to, you can get a bus into Cromer from here. Bus stops just across the road there. And it'll drop you back off on the opposite side. Just down there. I must just show you this over here. A couple of things actually. Some really old style camper vans here, which I think belong to the owner. But check this out. There's the fire point there, and it's needed. They've got their own very own fire engine called Poppy One. And then over here, like the old Carefree Thames. Looks a bit like an old comma van, that. My dad drove us to southern Spain in an old comma van, a Luton camper van. That's beautiful. So is that. Very nice. But look at this one over here. A little beauty, isn't it? I don't think there's any one in it. <laughs> I hope not. The Bluebell, that's called. I'm sure that belongs to the site. <laughs> I 
What a little cracker that is. Austin Cotswold. I remember the old ice cream vans used to look like that. When I was a kid anyway, that's a long time ago. And there you have it folks. I believe there's about 20 pitches on here. Hard standing, electric hookup. Peace and quiet. And now, is it time for an alcoholic beverage? Mm -hmm.